Good morning. How y'all doing? <laughs> that was a mixed answer there. I don't know why I was expecting you all to answer in sync. Being united in the Holy Spirit, maybe? I don't know. Something like that. If you're new here among us, my name is Gene. I serve here at C3 Church as your lead pastor. I am also excited to be in our Corinthian series. This is where we're looking at the biblical books of 1st and 2nd Corinthians letters, actually, from Paul, the apostle, to the church in Corinth, where they are having issues. Some have called them crazy, so we're asking the overlying question throughout this series, are we any different today as people or as a church? Before we begin, I want to address the elephant in the room, the pink elephant in the room. No, it is not your eyes. I'm wearing a pink shirt. The fabric is called seersucker. It's a fun word to say, seersucker, but it's a really dangerous word to say. So before you just try and blurt it out like I did, you might want to practice alone in your room because you are just one syllable away from saying something you ought not to say when you say seersucker. So you're probably asking, Gene, why the pink seersucker shirt? Well, for those of you watching online, we are in Naples, Florida, stones throw away from the beach, so you can wear stuff like this here. I always make fun of my other friends from New York, wearing things like linen and seersucker. It takes a little time, but you start doing it when you move down here from the north. But Gene, why pink? I get the seersucker. I wonder how many times, someone's counting, that I say that. Well, I heard that real men wear pink. So I wanted to find out what it felt like to be a real man. (laughs) Pretty darn good, just letting you know. All right, now that's out of the way. (laughs) And the whole thing that I discussed at the Bible study about not being a distraction has been totally thrown out the window. We'll start with 1 Corinthians chapter 10. Chicken or the egg? Did I buy the shirt for the joke, or am I telling the joke because I bought the shirt? I'll leave that up to you to decide. Corinthians. So, we talked about this before. The biblical books didn't have numbers in them. (laughs) These were letters. So we have gospel accounts, right, which are biographies. These are letters in our Bible to the church in Corinth. No numbers all over the place. So we have certain overlying themes that go over a number of different chapters. Chapters 1 through 4, overlying theme. Disunity caused by following after worldly leaders, not Jesus. Worldly wisdom, not godly wisdom. 5 through 7, sex. Sexual sin, five and six, seven, as it pertains to marriage, divorce, and remarriage. Eight through ten, meat sacrificed to idols. If that sounds really weird to you, it should. It's weird. Chapter eight, I discussed that, so you can go back through the app and you can look into exactly what that is. Today we are in chapter ten. Ten is kind of like the summary of eight through ten. Paul will deal with idolatry. He'll talk about a little history. That's where we're going to land this morning. He moves into forecasting into what he's going to talk about in chapter 11, the Lord's Supper, the elements included in that. Some of you may associate that with communion. And then he does kind of a wrap-up. He comes full circle at the end of chapter 10. So we're going to hang in the beginning. 1 Corinthians chapter 10. This is what Paul writes. I'll just go through the text and then we'll unpack it. I want you to know, brothers, that our fathers were all under the cloud. All passed through the sea, and all were baptized into Moses in the cloud and in the sea. They all ate the same spiritual food, and all drank the same spiritual drink. For they drank from a spiritual rock that followed them, and that rock was Christ. But God was not pleased with most of them, for they were struck down in the wilderness. Now these things became examples for us, so that we will not desire evil things as they did. Do not become idolaters, as some of them were. As it is written, the people sat down to eat and drink and got up to play. Let us not commit sexual immorality, as some of them did, and in a single day, 23,000 people fell dead. Let us not test Christ, as some of them did, and were destroyed by snakes. Nor should we complain, as some of them did, and were killed by the destroyer. 
Now these things happened to them as examples, and they were written as a warning to us on whom the ends of the ages have come. Therefore, my dear friends, flee from idolatry. So if you're paying attention, you will probably get killed by snakes if you complain about anything that I'm doing. Examples for us today. No, Paul is writing these things as examples so we don't become like the Israelites did and fall into the sin of idolatry. This is a collection of of things that happened in what we call today the Old Testament portion of our Bibles, Exodus and Numbers specifically. There were scriptures to those people then. So, begs the question, what is idolatry? Pretty much none of us are sacrificing meat to idols. How do we do it? Well, let's just go back and look at the biblical definition before we start coming up with other ideas. We see it in Exodus 21. <coughs> Moses, <coughs> Moses gets the Ten Commandments from God. Exodus 20, starting at verse 1. Then God spoke all these words. I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt, of the place of slavery. Do not have other gods besides me. Do not make an idol for yourself, whether in the shape of anything in the heavens above or on the earth below or in the waters under the earth. You must not bow down to them or worship them, for I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, punishing the children for the father's sin to the third and fourth generations of those who hate me, but showing faithful love to a thousand generations of those who love me and keep my commands. Idolatry. Simply put, it's the worship of idols or excessive devotion to or reverence for some person or thing that is not God, that is simply put. God. Now, this, this idea of idolatry is countercultural here in America. Think about it. We have a show called American Idol. American Idol. So the question is, so the question is, have we fallen prey to our surroundings? To our surroundings? What might we have what? made idols in our lives. What is something we're doing that we're spending more time thinking about it than Jesus? What is something we're doing that's taking us away from spending more time in the Word? If in your Bible, if you're new. What is something that we're doing? What is something that we're doing? We rush out of here on a Sunday morning to go do. Could it be the sports that we talked about last week? Now, Google says there's 168 hours in a week. I'm not going to lie, Google it. Didn't even try to figure it out or use a calculator or anything. The service is just one of those hours. How long is the game? How long is the game? Now, I want to say this. Now, I want to say this. I appreciate that you all came in here today. You took out the time. A lot of people won't take to carve out for a service. Appreciate that. I especially appreciate those of you who took that first difficult step in here. That's hard. Welcome. I appreciate you. I appreciate those who stay and serve. I appreciate those who the potlucks upstairs. I appreciate those of you. I appreciate those. Some of you devote your whole weekend to service. Devote your whole weekend. It's amazing. And I'm also not saying that a church worship service represents the totality of our Christian existence somehow. It's not. That's why I mentioned. Thinking about Jesus. It could be prayer. It could be reading your Bible. We can always do it here in the church building. It's where we worship corporately together. As we mature in faith, we need to ask ourselves about the worldly things that are occupying more of our time, our thinking, and our money than the things of God. Are we just punching a time card? Are we just punching a time to get God out of the way? So we can get back to doing what's really important to us. It's a question we have to ask ourselves. What are those things? What are those things? Those things are idols. As we discussed, everything is permissible. First Corinthians 10, 23. Paul repeats this theme. Everything is permissible, so say the Corinthians. We do what we want. Paul responds, but not everything is helpful. Everything is, everything is permissible, right? Everything is permissible, right? Everything not everything builds up. Right? Not everything Again, builds up. Not everything 
Again, here Paul asks, again, here what Paul if someone asks, sees you doing these here, things? What if someone asks, sees you doing these things? You might lead them into the sin. Idolatry is visible sin. to those Idolatry around us. Those and so someone might get the impression, the weaker, it's okay. It's okay. Okay. The root. Idolatry comes from a lack of devotion and faith in Christ. A lack of faith leads to a desire for instant gratification. So we're going to look at Paul's list there. So we're going to look a whole bunch of weird sounding things to us, right? The snakes, all the other stuff, getting up to eat and drink and play. What does he mean? Well, I'll show you one of them. It's in Exodus 32. A golden calf, that's what Paul is referencing, an idol that was made for them. We'll see how that happens. He references, actually, the getting up to eat and play is a reference to what they did after they made the calf and worshipped it. So here's what he says in 1 Corinthians 10, verse 7. Don't become idolaters as some of them were. As it is written, the people sat down to eat and drink and got up to play. Let's back up. Exodus 24. Back up. Exodus the Lord calls Moses up on Mount Sinai to receive Moses the Ten Commandments and some other laws. So let's just take a look at that first. We'll back up a little bit. Exodus 24, 12, get the context. The Lord said to Moses, Come up to me on the mountain and stay there so that I may give you the stone tablets with the law and commands I have written for their instruction, the Israelites. So Moses arose with his assistant Joshua and went up the mountain of God. He told the elders, Wait here for us, Wait remember here that, for us. until we return to you. Until we return Aaron and Hur are here with you. Aaron, Aaron is Moses' brother. Whoever has a dispute should go to them. When Moses went up the mountain, the cloud covered it. The glory of the Lord settled on Mount Sinai, and the cloud covered it for six days. On the seventh day, he called Moses from the cloud. The appearance of the Lord's glory to the Israelites was like a consuming fire on the mountaintop. Moses entered the cloud as he went up the mountain, and he remained on the mountain 40 days and 40 nights. So, between 24 and 32, Exodus 24, 20, or 32, there are all these commands about the tabernacle, the ark, the priestly garments, and the Sabbath. That's what occurs there. When all was finished, Exodus 31, 18, when God finished speaking with Moses on Mount Sinai, he gave him the two tablets of the Testament, stone tablets inscribed by the finger of God. But in the meantime, it's kind of like a movie where you do the flashback, what's going on while this is going on. The Israelites get impatient. The Israelites get impatient. Where'd Moses go? Moses go. God is taking too much time for the, their taste, right? So they go to his brother Aaron. They go to his brother Aaron. And they ask him to make a God for them. Exodus 32 1. When the people saw that Moses delayed, dare he in coming down from the mountain, they gathered around Aaron and said to him, Come, make us a God who will go before us, because this Moses, the man who brought us up from the land of Egypt, we don't know what has happened to him. Then Aaron replied, Take off the gold rings that are on the ears of your wives, your sons, and your daughters, and bring them to me. So all the people took off the gold rings that were on the ears and brought them to Aaron. He took the gold from their hands, fashioned it with an engraving tool, and made it into an image of a calf, an idol. Interesting little tidbit here. When Moses comes back and asks him about it, he's like, I don't know, this thing just appeared. Not so. Here's another lie. <laughs> then they said, Israel, this is your God who brought you up from the land of Egypt. But that's not true. This is what God says of himself. Exodus 22. I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the place of slavery. We need to patiently trust that God will provide. Instead of going to our gold and building ourselves an idol, something else to trust in, something we manufacture, something we put our trust in like the Israelites did, instead of faithfully waiting on God. Do we do this with our finances when Jesus hasn't answered fast enough? Idolatry comes when Christ isn't enough. Idolatry comes when Christ isn't enough. And he hasn't given us what we want. He hasn't fast given enough. us what we want. Or we don't trust that he'll take care of us. Or we don't trust that he'll take care like of us. Like I said last week, the storing up like all these large week, savings accounts. Up, all these large it's savings a lack of faith. Accounts, all these large it's a lack of faith. What makes this worse is the culture around us is the culture teaches us that everything 
Everything needs to happen everything fast. Happens. Fast. It's a culture of instant culture gratification. Of instant gratification. Think about it. Instagram. Instagram. Does anyone here remember dial up? Remember back in the time of Moses and Aaron? Back in the time of Moses and Aaron? The dial up. You start your computer and you go get breakfast. Start your computer and you go get Come back. Finish your coffee. Back. Then maybe you're on the internet. Now it's unbelievable. Now it's my computer's really fast compared to that. My computer's really fast. I get on the internet and if it takes more than that long, I'm like, come on! I'm like, come on! Like, come on! Which makes it worse, right? Which makes it worse. But that's how we are. That's how we've all become. This is the world we live in. This is the world we live in. So instead of patiently waiting for the dial up, we make for ourselves an insta idol. Instant gratification. Instant gratification. Also, sometimes Satan offers us one. Satan offers us another alternative. Another like Aaron did for the Israelites. It is a lack of faith in God. It is a lack of leads to the initial worship of an idol. Worship as it was for the Israelites, but it doesn't stop there. Paul's list is longer than that. They would continue to do all kinds of things, including violating the godly institution of marriage and even the sanctity of life itself. Got bad. Are we any different? Are we any different? Lack of faith in God leads to lack of faith in God leads him. to lack but of that's just God the initial leads. rushing out of the church service. The initial rushing out of the church we service. need to look at, we need ask to ourselves, look at, what are all the things what are all the we're running things? to? What are all the we're running the plethora of things. Jefe, do you even know what a plethora means? I'm so proud of the amount of laughter so I got out of that one. Yes. I had to lighten it up a little bit. It was going hard. <laughs> What are the things pulling us out of church? What are the things pulling away us from out of God? What are the things pulling away from God? And what parts of our lives do they disrupt, or even destroy, or even destroy? Or even destroy? Let me give a just a small warning. If you have small children, it's hard for me to see with the lights. Everyone, I want to give an earmuffs warning. If they're sensitive, I'm not going to get vulgar, but I'm going to talk about some adult stuff. I'm going to get a little bit real. That is my warning. Sometimes the focus can come off of Sometimes Christ due to lack of faith or lack of Christ patience. Of faith or lack of Perhaps the honeymoon is over with Jesus. Is over with Jesus. Perhaps it never began. Perhaps, it Perhaps never we never began. took that step with the faith in him. So here's what Satan does. He offers a counterfeit version for us to chase after. So this is where we need to have the discipline and discernment that we talked about at the end of chapter 9, right? Paul talks about discipline my body so that I don't disqualify myself when I preach. We all need to have it so that we can avoid Israel's mistakes. Discipline and discernment to recognize it. Now, I'm going to give you an example and have a little bit of fun. Proverbs. I love Proverbs. I read them every day. Proverbs contains what is called parallelism. It's another fun word to say. Like Sears soccer. Parallelism. Don't try to blurt it out. Practice it in your room alone first. Parallelism. Parallelism. Parallels, right? So if you read the Proverbs, Parallel. you're familiar. Da 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 da, but da 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 da, da 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 da, but da 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 da. That's kind of the pattern that goes on there that you see. Comparisons, comparison, nice poetic form. So in Proverbs, we see that wisdom is personified as a woman. Old women are like, old women are like, told you. <laughs> it's true throughout the Bible. It's true. Wisdom. The Bible. It's true. Wisdom. Is a woman. Wisdom. Is a woman. So we have one hand, but also before you laugh but too also, hard. Before you laugh too also, hard. So is the adulteress. So is the adulteress. And so we have. And so we have. Wisdom woman. Parallel. With woman. With wisdom or adulterous woman. A comparison. The adulterous woman is Satan's counterfeit option. So check it out. Proverbs 9.1. Proverbs 9.1. Wisdom has built 
her house. She has carved out her seven pillars. She has prepared her meat. She has mixed her wine. She has also set her table. She has sent out her female servants. She calls out from the highest points of the city. Whoever is inexperienced, enter here. The one who lacks sense, she says, the one who lacks come, sense, she eat says, my bread and drink the wine I have mixed. Leave inexperience behind and you will live. Pursue the way of understanding. Now this is what the adulterous woman says. Proverbs 9.13. The woman folly is rowdy. She is gullible and knows nothing. She sits by the doorway of her house on a seat at the highest point of the city, calling out to those who pass by, who go straight ahead on their paths, whoever is inexperienced, and and here. To the one who lacks sense, she says, to the one who stolen lacks water sense, says, is sweet, and bread water. eaten secretly is bread tasty. Eaten secretly. But, he but, but he doesn't know that the departed spirits are there, and her guests are in the depths of Sheol. Interesting. They both say a variation of the same thing in the beginning. Did you notice that? They both call from a high point. They both call the inexperienced to enter here, but their paths lead to totally different places. This is how Satan works. He offers a counterfeit version of something. He doesn't always eliminate what's good. Just offers a counterfeit, perverted version of it. The second option. One, which is easier to obtain. He presents us with an idol, a golden calf. Something that is not as good, but is immediately tangible. Did you notice how the adulterous woman had stolen water and bread to be eaten secretly? As opposed to wisdom, worked. She prepared the food, right? She was outright, straightforward. It involved work, wisdom, and she continues. Work, wisdom, and she continues. Fear of the Lord. That doesn't sound like fun, does it? Like fun. Not easy. Proverbs 9:10. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And the knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. For by wisdom your days will be many. For by wisdom your years will be added to your life. For if you are wise, you are wise for your own benefit. You walk. You alone will bear the consequences. You alone we talked about that last week. Satan offers a counterfeit offers a to appeal to our laziness and impatience. An easier option to appeal to a person's lack of discipline. These counterfeit versions do appeal to our laziness. Like fast food in relation to our diet or porn. In relation to our sex lives, in relation to both are easier. Lives. Both are counterfeit versions are of, counterfeit the real thing. of the real thing. If you are married, if you, you know married, this, if you know this. We get lazy in our romantic we lives sometimes our romantic with our spouse. Lives. It takes time and effort. With our spouse, it takes time and effort. But porn is easier. But porn is easier. Sex in marriage takes time and effort. Sex in marriage takes. You have to care effort. about the other person. You have to care about the other person. We have to take time. You have to take time. Are they in the mood or not? Are they in the mood? We have to be patient. Maybe. Be patient. Maybe. Heaven forbid we have to wait. Heaven forbid we have to wait. It's not always instantly gratifying. It's not is always it? instantly gratifying. Is but you don't have to wait but for porn. You don't have to wait. You don't have to consider anybody's feelings. You don't have to consider anybody's feelings. You, don't have to you can turn it on and off at the push of a button. Turn it on and, and be off done with the push it. of a button. Turn it on and, and off be done with it. it. This is Satan's counterfeit this option. Is Satan's counterfeit it's cheap. Option. Selfish, easy, selfish, and done in secret. But it doesn't lead to anything good. But it doesn't lead to anything good. Doesn't build our marriages up. Look at First Corinthians ten twenty three. First Corinthians ten twenty three. All things are permitted. All things are permitted. Not all things are profitable. Not all things are all things are permitted. All things are not all things build up. Let no one seek his own good, but no one seek his own good. This counterfeit perversion of what this God intended sex to be, in some cases, has replaced marriage. Why bother? Why bother? Why bother? It is an idol. Why offered up an idol. as an alternative to the an godly an institution of marriage, which takes work, discipline, patience. Likewise, in diet, you can all breathe. Likewise, now, it's okay. We're not talking about that. Fast food is easier. 
Fast food is easier. If you meal Fast prep. Fast food is easier. If you I don't. Meal prep. My wife does. I don't. <laughs> My wife does. I would not. <laughs> It takes time. It's unbelievable. It takes effort. Time. You got to go to the grocery store. It's difficult. Fast food. You don't even need to get out of your seat. You don't even need to get out of your seat. That easy. It's cheap. It's easy. Meal prep and dieting take time, discipline, and effort. Effort. You need to prepare it. You need to prepare it. Like the personified woman wisdom did. Fast food is cheap. Bad for you and. Sometimes we eat it in secret. It is literally a perversion of literal food when you think about it. Discipline and patience take time. Discipline and patience We need to carve out time for Jesus. Like marriage and meal prepping. Like marriage and meal prepping. Take time. That requires patience and discipline. Now, often overlooked. Often overlooked. Part of discipline that people don't consider. Don't is actually the opposite of what you think it would be. Actually, the opposite of what you think it would be. Surrender. Remember, we talked about Jesus fasting last week. You have to surrender what you want. You have to surrender your will. Yield your will to God. It's a huge part of Christian discipline. We don't often think about this. We don't often think about it. It is an absolute key to Christianity. Surrendering our want. Rendering our want to the will of the Lord. That's where it really begins. That's where it really begins. That is where true that power where true comes from. Power. We cannot do anything good on our own. We cannot do anything it's impossible. Good on our own. If you do not understand that, you, you can't even start. That, you, you cannot start. do anything good on our own. Do anything. Everything good comes from God. The Holy Spirit working in us. He cannot do that work unless we yield to him. Surrender. That's where the power comes from. Paul writes this beautiful prayer to the Ephesians. Ephesians 3.14. For this reason, I kneel before the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. I pray that he may grant you, according to the riches of his glory, to be strengthened with power in the inner man through in his man, spirit, through and that the Messiah may dwell in your hearts through faith. I pray that you, being rooted and firmly established in love, may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the length and width, what is the length, height and depth of God's love. Beautiful. And to know the Messiah's love that surpasses knowledge, so that you may be filled with all the faithfulness of God. Now to him who is able to do above and beyond all that we ask, or think according to the power that works in us. Power that to him be the glory in the church and in Christ Jesus to all generations forever and ever. Amen. Amen. We need to be mindful of his presence even when we can't see him. This is the key. To be submissive enough to let the Holy Spirit lead. It's not enough to white knuckle it through life. It doesn't work that way. Well, anyway, we have to surrender, yield our will to the Holy Spirit, and let Him lead. Let Him lead us out of our immediate desires. When we get too impatient for the real thing, we get too impatient for the real thing. Sometimes we sell ourselves short. Sometimes we sell ourselves the counterfeit. The counterfeit wasn't worth it. We need to be patient. We, re- we need to remember that the Holy Spirit is God. If you are a Christian, that is what you must believe. In the triune God, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit is God. We need to be led by Him. Being led by anything else is being led by an idol. And it leads to destruction. Ultimately, death of our souls. The Holy Spirit will keep our minds and hearts focused on Jesus. Like the applications with marriage and diet, we need to keep our focus on Christ. Keep Him at the center, and all things then fall into place. All things then fall into place. First Corinthians ten thirteen. Paul writes, "No temptation has overtaken you except what is common to humanity. God is faithful, and He will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able. But with the temptation, He will also provide a way of escape, so that you are able to bear it. Through our temptations, we have both." 
better options better options and help from the holy spirit from as an escape from that sin escape from that sin we should exhibit Discipline through that process and patience as we discern, we pray through, we ask God for help to see those better options, to protect us from the temptation. In addition to these tools, you have a church. You're not alone. You're not alone. God wants you to be part of the body. He does not want you alone. Alone is where the enemy wants you. Is where the enemy wants. They're easy to get there. So last week I encourage you to get so last in week, I to service. You to get in. If you aren't already, to be a part of what we're doing here. This week, I'm going to encourage you to get plugged in to what we call life groups, so to speak, doing life together, doing life together, doing life together. Bible study, 6 p.m. Wednesday nights, upstairs in the ballroom. Wednesday nights, upstairs. I lead it. You know what? You don't have to know anything you know to come to it. You don't have to know anything to you come to it. You don't need to know anything. Isn't it funny? I hear so many people say, man, I can't come to church. I'll burn up if I go in there. Really? I'll burn up if I go in there. God, that's not true. God, that's not true. I'm not on fire right now, am I? I'm not on fire right now, am I? But you don't need to know anything to go to Bible study. Same thing. You've got to start somewhere. There's no quizzes. I don't make you take tests. It's actually a lot of fun. You listen to the chapter. Sometimes I read it to you so that people aren't like mispronouncing all these biblical names. It's not embarrassing. Except for me. That's it. We talk. We do life together. We have some really great conversations and we get closer to one another. SOT. It's a little more classroomish. Still fun, so I hear. Todd and Tracy lead it. Thursday nights, 6 p.m. School of Theology. Wonder Women. Wonder Women. They get real. My wife, they Heather, leads the Wonder Women group. Right. If you've ever seen her message, you know her story is very real. You can take the mask off and be yourself. No one's going to yell at you. They come in their pajamas sometimes. It's true, on purpose. Just to make a point. Men's group. We have one starting up. And I got the dates totally wrong in my notes, so I apologize if it's in the app. It's wrong. I'm wrong. I'm wrong. Do you like that? <laughs> men. I, did we talk about this in the Bible men. study last week? I, I gave the married men, especially the young the ones, men, a very good piece of ones. advice. So men, men's group, so you got to go over this, Ray, on Saturday. On Saturday. Could be wrong. Could be wrong. We're going to say that. So you have two choices that. in marriage. You can you either be right, in marriage. You can either be right, or you can be happy. Or you can be happy. I'm just saying. So make sure you go over that with the married men. It's very, 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 very important. Very, 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 very important. Never mind. I'm going to stop. <laughs> okay. Stop, stop, stop. Base. Okay. Get on the notes, Gene. Men's group. So it is this coming Saturday, correct? So it is this coming Saturday, correct? 10 a.m.? Upstairs in the loft. Mr. Betka, Ray Betka, can you Mr. raise your hand or something? Ray Betka, can you there you go. Awesome windbreaker jacket. <laughs> See him after service. Really See nice guy, service. my friend Ray. Really He's nice leading guy. the group. Come on, men, get in there. Come Take on, men, the mask there. off. Get Take honest. Off. Look, maybe you're struggling with something. Maybe you're struggling. With something. Aren't we all? Aren't we all? Maybe some accountability would be good. Maybe some accountability would be good. Maybe you just need someone to talk to. Need someone to talk to. Maybe you're alone. We don't want you doing life alone. So that is why we have these groups. So third Saturday of every month on that group. Second Saturday of every month. See my wife Heather. I'm stepping all over her announcements. But clap anyway. We get real here. It's important. We don't want you hiding. We don't want you alone. We don't want you doing life alone. We want you to come to these groups. We want to get to know you. I want to get to know you. That's what being real church or real people is all about. Amen? Love you guys.